Rock and roll time, my top three road running shoes of 2019. But before we dive in, a huge happy birthday to Bob. December 13th is Bob's birthday. Bob, happy birthday. Somehow I found out through the grapevine that it is your birthday. Happy birthday, Bob. Thanks for watching the vlog. I hope you have an amazing day wherever you're at, whatever you're doing, hopefully having a good time. All right, everyone, we're diving in. Here we go. I'm doing my best to keep you updated on my training leading into the Houston Marathon. Let me know, though, if I should be doing more talking. I talk a lot in the studio, but more detail, I should say, about the actual training that I'm doing. So here's the deal. The easiest way to figure out what I'm doing is to follow, follow me on Strava, okay? Because all my runs end up on Strava. But also, I'm doing my best, sometimes I forget, but I'm doing my best to post my training for the week down in the description. Now, it's not really detailed, uh, but it gives you the basic volume. Sometimes I go into a little more detail when I'm talking about specific workouts. So, uh, anyway, today's run, and I try to let you know, uh, like right now, uh, what I did today. So I'm gonna tell you, here we go. So today's, ru today's runs, I should say, plural, uh, 10 miles in the morning at about 7, 10 a mile. So what I would classify as a steezy to steady pace. Uh, and steezy, steezy, some of you have wondered what that means when I post that on Strava. Steady plus easy. So it's not quite steady, not quite easy, but steezy. All right, so there you go. So today, 7, 10 a mile. And then this afternoon, starting to, as I posted on Strava, I said, uh, starting to open up the carburetor a little bit. So 6, 10 a mile for 13 miles. It's not quite time to start doing workouts. That will be happening next week. And then also not quite time for threshold runs. That will be happening probably like, it's about eight days, nine days from now when you're watching this. So there you go. That was today's runs, which leads me in to running shoe number three on my list. The shoe that I ran, for my, ran in for my second run today. Oh man, this was hard. This was hard, everyone. And I can't believe I'm putting an A6 into the top three running shoes of 2019. There it is, the A6 Glide Ride. I was on the fence, but after today's second run, 13 miles, 6, 10 a mile, I was like, yup, it was, it was borderline, but I was like, yup, I believe in the shoe. I really do, because that was the fastest pace I had taken the shoe out at, out at. And all right, so a few specs of the A6 Glide Ride real quick. Drop six millimeters, so right where I like it. I love that six to eight millimeter window for training. Stack height, we're looking at 35 in the heel, 29 in the forefoot. So that's uh, that's nice, you know, that's nice cushion. And we'll get back to that in a second, uh, but not too much. It's, oh uh, gosh, it's not a maximalist shoe. It's borderline, borderline maximalist shoe, but it doesn't feel like a maximalist shoe, like a ton of uh, midsole cushion. And then as far as weight goes, this is probably the drawback to the shoe. It is a little heavy. So for men's size nine, we're looking at 10.3 ounces and there it is in grams on your screen. Or women's size nine is, uh, sorry, in converting that to women's size eight, you're looking at 9.1 ounces. Now, why did the Asics Glide Ride make the cut for 2000? in 19. First of all, is it worth $160? Oh boy, that's a lot of money. Again, borderline. I think I think it is. And this is why. Uh, maybe not necessarily because of performance, but more so because of build quality. I'm telling you, I think this shoe can go the distance. Just feeling it, feeling the build quality now, uh, like through the upper, through the outsole, through the midsole. But I'm just going to say in 2020, I hope they update the shoe a little bit. And I think the heel counter is a little overbuilt. It's just like got a lot of material here in the back of the shoe. So in order to drop the weight of the shoe and uh, maybe, who knows, maybe even drop the price a little bit, they could just streamline the heel counter. That would be almost my only recommendation for the shoe. The shoe has pop. Now, if, I, if it wasn't so heavy, I think it would feel very comfortable for me like today at 545 a mile. Um, it's not a racing shoe. I'd put it in the tempo category and uh, how will I be using the shoe in 2020? You know, I could, I, that's what's beautiful about it. You can use, go long run if you want. Definitely a long run shoe, but it has the pop 
of a of a tempo day like I did today. So anyway, I love it. I'm shocked that I'm putting an Asics into the top three, but again, build quality. Um, it has pop, and it's uh, you can use it in different ways, whether it's a long run or a tempo shoe. And oh yeah, one last point. It's a neutral road shoe, okay? But it's it's it feels almost like a stability shoe. You don't feel like you're turning your ankle. It doesn't feel loosey goosey through the midsole. It feels like you're being uh, guided through your foot strike, if that makes sense. So there you go, shoe number three to make the list: the Asics Glide Ride. And moving on to shoe number two. Yeah, that's right. It's a Nike. There it is, the Nike. Zoom fly three, zooming up to position number two for my top road running shoes of 2019. It's got the carbon fiber plate in that midsole. You're looking at a eight millimeter drop, so a 40 millimeter stack height in the heel, 32 millimeter in the forefoot. That's a good chunk of midsole foam to help protect that carbon fiber plate in there. They do have the vapor weave upper, uh, just like the uh, the next percent. It's not it's not just like the next percent, but similar material uh, through that vapor weave upper. For weight, it's not too bad. So for men's size nine, nine ounces or 255 grams, not perfect. I have a feeling that they will again streamline the upper in 2020. Just help, just take some of that material off the upper because it is. You know, you can see the scrunching through the through the uh, toe box here. I think they could clean up the upper just a bit, uh, but overall very comfortable. And the reason why, one of the reasons why the shoe made the top three is that I think the uh, the collar of the shoe is much more comfortable than the Nike Turbo 2. We'll be talking about that shoe at another point in time, but I just really enjoyed the collar, very comfortable uh, through this heel counter here in the back. And I do like also the outsole uh, shape and pattern is mimicking the next percent. So if you enjoy the ride of the next percent, if you own the next percent for racing, uh, you probably you, there's a good chance you also own, own the Zoom Fly 3, and it's mimicking the next percent shape through that outsole. So. Overall, very pleased. I got some really solid training in the shoe in 2019, leading into the Amsterdam Marathon. Just putting in the miles. Uh, now, brand new. I believe it's still hovering around $160, but I've also seen it as cheap as $105. So go searching. If you can look for your size, if they have your size, there are some deals to be had out there for the Nike Zoom Fly 3. And once 2020 hits on the calendar, I think the price will continue to drop really nice. Um, so I, I'm very pleased just because it protected my legs. My legs never really felt like they were crushed after a 20 mile long run in the shoe. And I was able to take it up to higher speeds for a tempo day. I never used the shoe for a threshold day, which for me is right around like 520 a mile. But for tempo days, perfect. It just did great. And yes, just getting a little extra pop out of that carbon fiber plate inside that midsole foam. So there you go running shoe road running shoe number two to make the cut for 2019 is the nike zoom fly three and last but not least i can't believe i'm going here that's right the drum roll sketchers max road four is breaking into the top three for my road running shoes of 2019. now listen it's not a perfect shoe it's not perfect no running shoe is perfect but it's moving, Skechers is moving in the right direction. I really believe they are. I think they're onto something with this hyperburst midsole. Again, not perfect, but the, the uh, patent, they have a patent on this hyperburst midsole. So basically inside this midsole are teeny tiny little bubbles, little teeny, think of a, a, a noodle that you have in a pool that you float on, you know those pool noodles, you lay back and kick back and relax. It feels like that. That's what this material feels like just a little bit because there's little teeny tiny air pockets, air bubbles inside, which again, just helps absorb the pounding on the pavement and the concrete. And that is exactly how I use this shoe, uh, getting ready for Amsterdam and then even after Amsterdam, getting ready for New York. And now I'm putting still, putting quite a few miles into this shoe uh, getting ready for the Houston Marathons. And for that stack height, we're looking at 28 in the heel, 22 in the forefoot for that six drop. And what's amazing, 8.4 ounces, men's size nine. Whoa, there it is on in grams on your screen. That is very, very lightweight 
for a shoe that has that much midsole. So that is where I believe this shoe is winning in 2019. And I suspect it's only going, I don't know why I set that down. I need it still. I, that, I suspect they are gonna continue to innovate this upper. So really comfortable upper. Now, how will I use the Skechers Max Road 4 in 2020? Long runs and middle distance runs. So anything from 15 to 22 miles, mwah, perfect. Absolutely perfect. And with that weight, 8.4 ounces, it just, you get done with your run and you just don't quite feel as tired. So that's why another reason I decided to put the Skechers Max Road 4 in my top three road running shoes of 2019. One more concern I almost forgot. I think they need to look a little more closely at the outsole. Um, after about 120 miles, I am seeing some pretty good wear and tear on the outsole. So I think, you know, they're gonna have to figure out something else there on the outsole just to give it a little more life expectancy. Uh, but overall, I'm very pleased and the price, $130. Not, not perfect, but pretty good. If it was 120, that would be a barn burner of a deal. But 130, we will take it for the Skechers Max Road 4. So there you have it one more time. The Asics Glide Ride, the Nike Zoom Fly 3, and the Skechers Max Road 4 are my road running shoes of 2019, my favorites. But listen, I could have, so honorable mentions, the Hoka Rincon, 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 uh, the Hoka Carbon X, which is right here. I actually, I was, I, oh, it was so close. The Carbon X almost made the cut. The reason it did not, real quick, I'll just mention, is remember the heel counter caused my Achilles tendons to bleed, both of them, uh, way back in the day. And even though it's got some great stack height, it's got the, car, the uh, carbon fiber plate through the midsole, it still felt just a little stiff. So I ended up having to put some Spenco into the shoe to help uh, alleviate some of the pounding. So anyway, because of that, I decided that the Carbon X just didn't quite make the grade for 2019. Question of the day, what are your top three or one, that's fine too, your top three road running shoes of 2019? Let us know, I cannot wait to read your comments. Like, and listen, again, I, I was unable to run in the Hoka Clifton 6, the Saucony Liberty ISO 2, uh, the Saucony Kinvara, is it 17? Oh my goodness, I don't know. It's, there's so many shoes out there that I wanna run in and I just run out of time and the legs can only take so many miles, you know what I mean? So anyway, we'll keep trying shoes moving forward for all of you in 2020, and uh, that's it. Oh, I can't believe it. What a year for road running shoes. I'm excited to see how all of these companies continue to innovate, push the envelope, uh, make better products for us to use in the new year. There you have it, everyone. Thanks for being here. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. All right. Throwing it back, everyone, to the running shoe full review playlist on the right and on the left. We'll throw it back to the, uh, a, well, you know what? We'll throw it back to the Nike Zoom Fly 3 full review on the left. All right, seek beauty, work hard, and love each other. See you tomorrow, everybody.